everyone, this is Sarah Wagus at patreon.com. That is patreon.com backslash S A R A W E G I S. Um, I was introduced to a program uh, yesterday. Um, it's a platform for online teaching, and um, yeah, people always think I'm weird because I'm looking at different ones and doing different ones, but. Um, a lot of them are pretty similar, so uh, learning a new platform it kind of becomes fluid after a while if you can, um, you know, make sure that you're, you know, practicing and doing these things a little bit. So um, this is the um, the platform New Row, and I'm going to make it smaller. I'm going to X out this stuff, and um, just wanted to show you guys what it looks like. Um, it's kind of blank and I do just have a, a first time members, um, use, so it's, I don't have a full subscription to it. So, um, here it is. This is the beginning of it. Um, you could add new content to it. There's the chapter information. Let me see. Um, it's really limited when you first open up new row. N e w r o w dot com. Um, I, I say um a lot, by the way. <laughs> I think everyone's beginning to realize that, but that's okay because it's part of my thinking process when I'm trying to come up with words to describe things. I found it with New Row so far just to use the on um, the join live class. And when I did the join live class, I also joined on my other computer as a student because when you do an online platform, you want to know what the students are seeing while you're working as a teacher. And I'm starting to get to work on the other side of things, which is kind of my end goal as an educator is to start working behind Canvas, being the educator, creating, creating the content for the classes and um, I've always been on the student side of Canvas and Blackboard and getting the opportunity to be on the other side is just always more engaging for me personally. So um, I do look at both sides because it's up to you as an educator if you want your class, even your online class, to be engaging and, and um, clear you have to make sure that you're looking from both perspectives and and it, it, that just makes you a better um, educator. So I'm going to click this on and see if it works. If It might not work because I've, I'm asking it to make the camera do two things and it might not like it. So it is, let me see, it is, you know what, I'll just put it on um, the other camera. Oh, so there I am. You get to see the other side of me. So this is my laptop camera right here, and then this is my web camera. So do you guys remember when I was talking in the videos about using a good webcam and, and making sure that you, you, you know, put a little bit more money to this? You can see big difference between the two cameras. This one, I... I I, this one I like whoa and this one much better I mean I know it's a side profile but geez Louise I don't look that bad anywho so always worth it to buy the webcam so this is my laptop's webcam this is also my laptop's webcam but it is a USB so it hooks in anyway just to be confusing so I'm just gonna push confirm now on this platform it has, um, I'm going to click all these things out, it has uh, the options and all this jazz for you. So right now, this is me, the educator, and I am doing a live broadcast. I don't have any students, but I'm doing a live broadcast because it gives you more tools and options to use when you're online versus when you're offline. So. I don't really quite understand the platform and why it works that way. Maybe it's because I don't have a full subscription, but I want to see things when they're live. I want to see what they're looking like. And when I did this, I found that being online, being here, right here doing this, 
um, definitely gave me a better perspective. So you can see me online here. So this is like um, when you come into New Row and it's completely blank. And you would start a class and your little buddies, your little friends and your students would start popping up down here. And what you would do is you would say, um, for what I'm doing, I'm going to be starting a PowerPoint presentation. So I've already uploaded my files into the PowerPoint. Uh, this is a PowerPoint. This is an image, another image, some other images. These are some things I'm doing with a whiteboard. Um, so you would click on the PowerPoint presentation and you push play and it pops up and your clicking is here as a teacher you're here and the students aren't seeing this stuff over here they're not seeing this because I've looked at it from the students perspective and they're only seeing this part and they will see their friends down here in their little windows um, I'm trying to think um, I can probably I'm just gonna pull up my web camera and you're gonna see like five sides of me which is disturbing but it's okay um, so I do have my other laptop right now and hopefully okay X out of that X out of that uh, 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 uh. okay so what I'm doing is I'm going in as a student and I don't, I don't know, I can pull my webcam around and show you guys, but um, you can find an invite link on New Row right here. You've got a little link right here and you can make a copy. You can send it via email. You can also require a password. So I've already got the link for um, my classroom. I think most classrooms will have just one code to get into. And as you see, you're going to start seeing, um, I'm going to mute this so that I don't get reverb. Okay, so what you're going to see is, <laughs> and you're going to see the reverb, you're going to hear the reverb because it's the sounds going back and forth um, from both devices. So I'm going to turn off my speaker and just deal with that. Um, um. Hopefully the, Hopefully the microphone, the microphone is, working. is working fine. fine or else the video is going to be shot. Okay, okay. So, so as, as an, an educator, educator I'm, I'm seeing my student, my student Esther Esther Wiggis, Esther right here. here. This, this is me. Is me. This, is this is my screen. screen. Now, now, as a as student, student, I'm going to look this up. up. So don't, so don't get wiggly on me. Don't get all ill. Because I know it couldn't. Don't look at my house either. Oh my gosh. So, so as, as a student, student oh, oh, not that is why you cap some things. As a student, you're going to start seeing that. that. I don't think that my screen is going to show up very, very well, well with this with webcam. Yeah, I apologize. Um, um, but you but see, you the see the webcam, webcam is on. on. The screen, the screen is right, right here. here. I can see I can the teachers, the students. There's a group of people here talking. It's a it's similar, similar screen. screen. The, screen the screen is very, is very similar, similar to what the teacher, teacher sees, except, sees, except, except that, you're that you're not seeing, seeing the, the um, this stuff right, stuff right here. here. And, and I, I think it kind of clarifies it. But like, like I said, like I said you know, make, you know, make it, it so that, that um, you try. You go be a student in your classroom. I know that you some people don't have to laptops, but you know, get a friend to get on their phone. I mean, you know, get on their phone and just go on to the class. And, and um, um, check, it, check out, it out and, and use whatever device you have available, available to, to um, run them at the same time. Just give yourself a looky-loo and see what's going on. Okay, so back to this. So this gives you the option to run a PowerPoint in the files, like I mentioned earlier, and you're just going to run through it. One thing I did find um, problematic is if you watched my earlier video, 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 video in video of PowerPoint presentation, the PowerPoint is PowerPoint presentation allowed me to click in to do the brain warm up. Now, this is not an option for this new row platform, and I don't really quite know why, but it probably has something more to do with this, which is playlist, which is where you have to insert um, your videos and such and things like your YouTube videos from, you know, you just put in a URL. 
Um, you can, uh, let me see, just. Uh, Grammarly does pause. more than catch um, errors. With Grammarly, just, you can I'm find really good, no, YouTube. perfect oh, words okay. that make your writing sharp count. or explicit anyway, or um, excellent or distinctive. Or As a matter of fact, for anyway, what it's so worth, you just go Grammarly find, can. Um, you find the link right up here. You copy it, X out. Um, you find the link. Oops, and it looks like it closed me out. So that's actually a pretty good fail safe if you pop away. Okay, so you link out, and then what you're gonna wanna do is confirm your devices, yada yada. Okay, so go back to your playlist, and then you can either search your playlist for more items, or you can add more items to your playlist. See right here, you can add a file. Um, I do believe, I'm still learning how to do this program, but it's just a lot of clicking and playing around. Um, <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't mind learning like this. Um, and then you can pull your files from your room. Um, you can do a global search. You can just paste that in and then you can search it, see what comes up. Uh, it do -ba -doop, and no files come up. I'm trying to remember how to get, oh, I remember you go to the tools and I remember I actually watched a video on how to do this. You go to YouTube and then you enter your URL code right here and you search it out. It actually has a really good search engine and um, apparently this is, Introduction to the Nanoscope. Oh boy, I, I watched some interesting videos. Anyway, so what you can do is you can click on it and you can add it to your playlist and it pops up over here, which is handy. So that's basically how you get a YouTube video into New Row. X out. Um, this is a chat room, by the way, so your students can chat with each other. You just X out of that. You can get rid of all this stuff and get it out of the way. This is just your participant list. When you have a whole group of people, they'll all be over here and you'll be able to see um, if they're live, if their camera's on, if their microphone's off. So you're gonna be able to tell them, hey, hey Diego, you need to turn your camera on or hey Cindy, you need to turn your microphone on, I can't hear you, um, that sort of thing. But back to the PowerPoint presentation because I get off track, I ramble. So I found out that with my PowerPoint presentation, I could not use a video within the PowerPoint presentation. So the alternative was to go to tools, to use the tool to create the playlist. And the playlist saves it into your classroom so that you can use it like so. So back to that video I was using before. I know it's obnoxious and silly, but I you know it's a, it's a video. One little, two little, three little and numbers. Four little, five little, six little. This is probably better for you. Okay, so there's that. And I found that they don't have a very smooth transition when you're trying to go back to the PowerPoint. It won't save your spot on the PowerPoint slide. So these are just some little intricate things that you need to think about when you're um, doing some of the, 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 the presentations. And maybe there's another way to do it. Maybe it's something that they can learn to do. So, so say your video's done, you've done, done, done. Now you're moving back to your PowerPoint presentation, so you've got to go back the same way. But I noticed, I noticed something important. When you're the student, you don't see the teacher pulling up these files and fiddling around. So as a teacher, you don't have the stress that they're seeing you, ah, you know, doing crazy stuff back here. They don't see behind the curtain, so you know, Wizard of Oz, you're safe, okay? They're, they're, they're not seeing behind that curtain. So they're still looking at the video and you just go like this and then you push play and then boom, then they're seeing back to your PowerPoint presentation and they're back to it. So there's that. So then we had their brain warm up and then we go through this. And imagining that I am teaching this as a whole class, I'm teaching a bunch of students got 15 kids all woke up and they're ready to go and they're all online on time. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, <laughs> well, you know, it's hard enough in the classroom. Let's try to imagine it happening online. 
I'm sure that many of the academies and the and the schools that are online are doing a good job at this, but it's different for public school students. There, it's going to be a different experience trying to turn on your computer, get online, participate. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit trickier. So anyway, so this is back to that same presentation I did before. Today's big question. You run through it and um, you read the questions. And then we go through this little math lesson that I have over here and boop, 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 all the way done and done. And what I wanted to kind of bring you to for this is the tools. You see right here is the whiteboard. Whiteboard, yeah. So the whiteboard is awesome because the whiteboard lets you make different whiteboards. And I don't know if very many people do this or use it, but it's just something I wanted to do specifically because of the, um, the online class and the way I, I would teach it in the classroom is I would have the students with manipulatives putting things together. And because I can't ask my demo class to suddenly pull out objects without some sort of previous knowledge, I am going to use the whiteboard so that they can interact with this activity. So I have created Miss W's whiteboard, a student number one, two, three, and four, and then finally the big question, which is going to wrap up the lesson, and that'll be the end of the lesson. And you can create more boards. You can edit them, you can delete them, um, you can rename them. Actually, that's the rename button and that's the deleting button. So this is part of New Row, and I do believe that many of the other platforms have this. So what I've done is I've gone over here and as you met, as I mentioned before, I had all these little images. So I was able to take these images and paste them here. I was able to paste them in. That was my child trying to interrupt me and he wasn't paying attention that I was podcasting. Okay, so this is Miss W's black um, whiteboard. Okay, so um, there are a few options to this and I haven't quite decided how I'm gonna do it. You can always just go in and delete and then um, it depends on how quick I guess you can get is you can add the little butterflies in later. So basically, the, 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 the process goes this way. Okay, everyone, I saw two butterflies and then three butterflies flew over and joined them. And then you bring one, and it's a little bit of a longer process and I didn't really like this. There should be a, like an auto um, cut and paste, but they don't seem to have a cut and paste option. Um, so you have to insert them one at a time. That was why I had decided earlier to leave the butterflies in place um, and just leave them like that. So we had two butterflies and then three butterflies joined them. How many butterflies do we have in all? Question, question. So one, two, three, four, five. Now get your pencil, get your pencil, okay? and you're going to write the number five. And students are gonna write the number five. There's also the option to use a marker in here, I noticed. So, you know, fat, fat chubby marker. And then you have the erase option to go through, oops, and go back and erase cleanly. And then this is a size, you know, I think a lot of people have some familiarity with art programs and, and online art programs, so they know that you can change the size of your markers, you can change the size of things. And just get in there and erase it. Or you can just go like this, boom, boom, back, 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 done, back. Okay, so now student number one has this equation to do. And it's kind of nice, they have this little option for a regular arrow or they have this big, nice, pretty arrow that you can do the pointing with. So student um, one, it seems to be, I don't know where that little butterfly went. He kind of got lost. Okay, 
yeah, it looks like it's just part of the imagery thing. I just This is why we go back and check things before we start. So we have three butterflies, two over here. I think that I need to add another butterfly because that doesn't make sense to do the same equation over again. So learning, learning, I'm learning everybody. So we're just going to put these little butterflies over here. And something important about kindergarten is um, you need them to understand objects in the sense of numbers because they still have a concept that um, things matter about what size they are. And so you have to let them and let them process that a number is not based on the size of the object. It's based on counting them. And I don't know there's actually a term for it and I apologize to the other educators that I don't know that specific term for students not recognizing that there is no numerical value to size in the sense of counting whatever it is I'm sorry Jesus you can come after me later it's, uh, Mr. Jesus is the math whiz that I know anyway so um, back to this one two three four five, six, and then you'd have the student come over with their little marker and, and fill it out. And this is for student number one. And they would be doing this in front of their peers. So giving them an opportunity to show their skills and their abilities. And you can kind of do a little, of a, little bit of an assessment too on them, um, find out what their technology skills are, how um, well they're forming their numbers and letters, or if the parents are sitting over there doing it for them. Um, if the parents have to do it for them, you need to make sure that the student is doing some sort of representation. So if there are six butterflies there, the student needs to be showing you six fingers. Or, you know, if necessary, um, cubes, objects. If, you know, honestly, if they can't use the mouse, I've had some teachers concerned that students aren't even going to be able to use a mouse. They can't even use the mouse. Then have them get a piece of paper and write it down. Just get them to write it out on a piece of paper and put it in front of you. Um, oh, and another fun thing was that uh, for this class I put together, I put together, fantastic. I don't know. I guess I should have done that backwards because I don't know. Fantastic. I hope it comes out correctly. I don't know if it flip flops it or mirrors it or what have you, but um, but little signs that say things like fantastic and good job. You know, students, they need a lot of little encouragements, especially when they're online learning. So back to this whiteboard. So we have all these little guys and they all get to do their little assignment. They're all different. Um, five. This one is six. This one is five. This one is... Um, Oop, that's too few. So this one's number four. I'm going to have the five, six. I think I'm going to take one of his butterflies away. Take one away. Um, so you can gear this to putting the student name on the whiteboard so that they do the work. And then you can also challenge specific students or um, create more assistance for other students. It depends on what they need. And then finally, the big question where we end, we go back to the question of, um, I'm gonna have to get the girl's names out because I forgot. Um, so this girl sees three butterflies, this girl sees four. How many butterflies do they see in all? And then we need everyone to show with their hands the number that they came up with and um, the lucky student gets to write the number into the box so um i think that this for my first attempt at a lesson on this platform and just in general my first attempt i, I think it, it's okay i mean there's a lot more tweaking i could do there's a lot of different aspects i could i could really um work on but I think that this would be a good lesson for students just to start. Um, well, actually, it wouldn't be starting because this is this is addition, and it doesn't happen until the second trimester, at least in my district. So, um, I think this is a good way to create your lessons. And yes, it is a lot of work, but honestly, we're spending less time with our students. I think that we need to spend a little bit more time working on engaging materials. 
And as I was mentioning to a friend, if we all collaborate at a grade level and we're all working and creating this type of coursework and we're all working on our lessons together, we can share them across the grade level. You can share this work with each other. You can copy and you know, share your PowerPoint presentations. And if the grade levels within the schools are working together, then if you have a large district, you can take what, you know, you can take each other's work and put it together. And the good thing about PowerPoint is, is that you can always edit. And now we have access to Google Drive and we share and we share and this is the new method of collaboration that we really need to focus on, that we really need to save each other like hours and hours of heartache and pain and working. This is where we really need to be going now because um, we don't know how long we're going to be doing online teaching as a public school. Public schools, if you're fortunate enough to work on an online um, program or an online school, then obviously that school is already going to have their curriculum and their work set up. But um, public school teachers collaboration is going to be a little bit different now. And collaboration is going to mean that everyone's going to have to step up and start putting this work together. If you're not good at making the PowerPoints or you're concerned that you're not good enough to do them or the technology scares you there are other ways to communicate with your coworkers and teach them how to design a lesson plan. I mean, you could be the one going through the created lesson plans and the PowerPoints and telling them, hey, this needs to change, we need this, um, this, is, this is how to do this. If we can accept that some educators are going to be skilled in certain aspects, and other educators who have been doing this for 15, 20, 25 years, more, if we can accept that we all have our own skills and capabilities, then we can work together and collaborate in a new way and really, and really work with our students and get them engaged in some very interactive stuff. Um, I guess it's more like a plea out there, you know, I, 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 really, I really hope that a lot of the educators are changing the way they collaborate and understand that what they might not have thought, some of the veteran educators, what might, they might not have thought was important of a skill or something that they would never have used or needed. Well, we, we, might, need, we might need, you know, those new educators to step forward and to really show off what they can do. Um, I might be speaking from personal experience. I, I really have a love for this stuff and I really love creating, but I do need guidance from someone who has more experience, who knows how to engage the students and who knows the standards and how to teach them. Um, because someone's always going to know more than me and I have no issue with that. But also, I'm really good at what I do and I really enjoy doing it. So let me do it and collaborate with people who are like me that like doing this stuff and it, it can work out. So I hope everyone has a wonderful week. Stay safe and um, let's hope that our kids are happy and come back to school in a very, very fun atmosphere. And whether it's online or in person, let's give them everything we can. Okay? Have a good one.